Right, so what are we transporting then? He goes, you're gonna be transporting 10 tons of hash from Morocco to Belgium. Back in 2003, I was 16, just turning 17 years old, and I'd taken the decision to leave school and to pursue a career in yachting. I went to this company in Marbella, in the south of Spain, called Marina Marbella, and I walked in, this, this, this teenager, and I asked for a job, doing anything. And they said, yeah, we got a job for you. You can start by cleaning boats for the summer. And immediately I took the job, I was very happy. I got the job and uh, it was great, great summer. And then they offered me the full-time job for the winter because I decided not to go back to school. I wanted to pursue a career in yachting. So the company in Marina Marbella, they trained me up. So I was driving all kinds of boats every day from, you know, from sea rays to with, with stern drives to ski boats with single shaft drives to sea doos which are the jet drives. And as I gained more knowledge and more experience, they put me on bigger and bigger boats. So it'd be twin, uh, twin screws, for example, or Arneson drives. Uh, we did um, client boat handovers, which means when a new client bought a boat, it was my job to go and train them how to use their boat. So things like docking, refueling, anchoring, what to do in certain situations, how to tow a skier or a, or a wakeboarder. And it was, a, it was great fun. I absolutely loved working for Marine Marbella. So they trained me up in the, in the summer months. In the winter months, there was less movement of boats. So I would go and become an assistant engineer so I can learn the, the engineering side as well during the winter months when there wasn't much going on with the movement of the boats. So as they trained me up through the years, um, I had gained enough sea miles knowledge and experience to sit the what's called the RYA, which is the Royal Yachting Association Yacht Master Offshore. Now, the limitations of this certificate is 150 miles from a safe haven, and uh, if I remember correctly, not exceeding 24 meter waterline length or 200 gross tons. The school was very close to to Marbella. It was a place, place called La Duquesa, actually, which is a you know, not far, maybe 45 minute drive, if I remember correctly, maybe an hour. And we get to the school, the instructor was English, really nice guy, I remember his name actually, his name is Phil. Um, did the school, we did it as a theory course for a week, followed by an exam, and then it was a practical course for a week, followed by a practical exam. And we cruised through the, the, the first, the, the two weeks, and it, it was great, passed the theory exam, fantastically happy with that, passed the practical exam, practical exam and I'm really happy with that as well. So then that evening after the other students and I had passed, um, if I remember there was one guy unfortunately that didn't pass, but he did go on then to pass the reset exam, which was, which was great. So we, went, we all ended up passing. And after, <clears throat> after maybe it was like two weeks, maybe three weeks or four weeks, I'd finished work and I was sitting with my closest friend at a bar and this guy that I knew, you know, it was more of a, an acquaintance. You know how, you know, when you see people in your town, you don't really know them, but you kind of have like a nod and an acknowledgement. You say, hi, how's it going? But you don't really have a deep conversation. It's, you know, it's very superficial, shall we say. He walks in and uh, he goes, hey, Tristan, how are you? And I'm fine. Uh, how are you? All good. And he goes, Oh, I heard that you passed your yacht master exam. I was like, yes. And uh, how do you hear about that? He goes, oh, um, a friend of ours told me. I was like, okay. I don't know why that conversation happened. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, it was great. He goes, well, congratulations. I'm like, great, thank you very much. He goes, I've got a, a, a guy that I work with or work for that would love to meet you and would love to talk to you about yachts and boating and get some, uh, he goes, maybe you guys can work together. So I was like, well, I'm working at Marine Marbella, uh, but, you know, set it up, meet, let us meet up and I'll see how I can help him. Bear in mind at this stage, I'm probably about 19, 20 years old. So I've been working at Marine Marbella about two or three years by this point. Anyway, so this guy sets up this meeting a few days later. And so I'm sitting in this cafe or bar 
uh, and it was in Marbella, it was in a town called Fingerola, which is about half an hour east of Marbella. And this guy comes in and it's this kind of uh, this English guy, strong kind of London accent and uh, big guy, tattoos, a lot of gold, gold chains. Um, I know you shouldn't judge people by their, you know, by their cover, but he looked like a dodgy, scary kind of guy. So he sits down and goes, oh, hi, Tristan, you know, I'm such and such. I'm like, hi, really nice to meet you. And, you know, Dominic tells me you're interested in boating and want to get into it, and then maybe I can help. And he goes on to kind of talk about, um, you know, the boating world, and he goes, I know nothing about it. Uh, uh, but it's not really what you think. So I was like, okay. Um, so he said, you know, tell me a bit more about your experience of boating. So I told him I used to, you know, uh, client boat hand boat, client boat handovers, transfers, take po uh, boats from point A to point B. And then he goes, okay, have you ever cruised around Morocco? I was like, yeah, yeah, I have because Marina Marbella, they've got a um, shipyard in Morocco. A lot of the boats that we transferred uh, were from Morocco to Marbella because before the season we go to Morocco where they stored the clients boats pick them up take them to Marbella or Porto Benus or whichever port it was drop them off for the season and after the season when the clients finish with the boat we'll pick them up and then bring them back to Morocco so I, I did have experience and then he said you know have you ever been up to you know um, the coast of Belgium and I hadn't I said actually no I haven't but I've only been Mediterranean based I've done a little bit of Portugal at this time but mostly med base. Like, okay, okay, okay. And he goes, well, basically, we've got this boat, right, in Morocco, like, right, uh, it's 25 meters long, right, okay. So it kind of, it, it's within my license because it was under 24 meter waterline length. And he goes, I just need somebody to transfer it from Morocco to Belgium. I was like, okay, right. He goes, you know, do you know how long it would take? I said, well, it, we, Dependent on the capabilities of the boat, it will be dependent on the weather forecast, obviously, the range, uh, and where, where, when, and where you want to take it. Uh, so I need to look into. I need to check the distances, all the different stops where we need to stop off to refuel, and maybe spend the night, and you know, safe havens in case the weather closes in. You know, give me some time. I said, so what's the what's the reason you're taking this boat from? Is it your boat, or you know, what is it? And he goes. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. We want you to transfer something on board from Morocco to Belgium. Um, not ideally non-stop, you have to stop, you have to stop, and to deliver the boat and then basically you leave it there and then you fly back to Spain. I was like, right, so what are we transporting then? He goes, you're gonna be transporting 10 tons of hash from Morocco to Belgium. And I was like, wow, I was a kid at this time. So I took a step, you know, like a breath. I was like, okay. And then he goes and says, and we are willing to offer you 55,000 euros to do the job. And looking back now, what I should have said is, thank you so much, I'm not interested, uh, it's not for me, and should have got up and walked away. But I was a kid, and immediately, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about the consequences, I was thinking about the money. You know, I never had that kind of money, not even close to that in my life. And to be honest with you, the first thing that, come, that came to mind was a brand new BMW, being a 19, 20 year old kid, that's the car that, you, that I wanted at the time. And I made a mistake and I said, you know what, give me a day to think about it. So we finish our drink, we talk about a few other things and um, looking back now, I can't believe I said that. So he leaves, I leave and I'm contemplating this and I can't believe it now looking back and I'm thinking this is 50,000 euros to do one transfer from Morocco to Belgium, within a week it's done. Less time, maybe. 
And I actually start looking at the potential routes and I start thinking about how I'm gonna spend the money. And then my senses came to me, luckily, and I'm so thankful for that. And I said, Tris, what on earth are you doing? You cannot be considering this. Give him a call and say, say to him, no, no, no. I didn't call him, I slept on it. The next day we agreed a meeting point and uh, I said to him, look, I really appreciate the offer. Um, this meeting that we've had does stay between us. So at this point I was gonna reject the job and I thought, you know what, maybe he won't like that and might, I don't know, have me disappear shall we say. So I said, look, this stays between us. It stops here. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for wasting your time. I'm not willing to take the risk and uh, I wish you good luck. He goes, Tristan, no problem. Uh, I fully understand. There's no hard feelings. And at this point, you're kind of like, this is what they all say before they shoot you in the back. But anyway, so we shook hands, we passed the ways and um, since then, I've never seen the guy before. The guy that introduced us, I saw him a few times after that, and then he kind of disappeared, never saw him again. And so, you know, the story of, in all these things, you, in life, you do make good and bad decisions. And I'm so glad now that I made that decision at that time, at that age.